According to Sudan's paramilitary rapid support forces RSF, the U.S. military evacuated American diplomats and their families early on Sunday as combat between competing commanders that has claimed hundreds of civilian lives continued. It claimed that six aircraft were used in operation, coordinated with the RSF. Separately, Reuters was informed by a source with the knowledge that U.S. Embassy staff had been successfully evacuated. The Pentagon did not immediately answer an inquiry for comment. On Saturday, other foreign nationals started leaving a Sudanese port on the Red Sea. Numerous people are stranded in the capital of Sudan due to the brutal onslaught of urban warfare which has shut down the airport and blocked parts of the city's roadways. Foreign nations and the United Nations have pleaded with opposing military officials to uphold stated ceasefires, which have mostly been disregarded, and to create safe passage for evacuating people and delivering much-needed relief. Thousands of foreigners, including embassy employees, humanitarian workers, and students in Khartoum and other parts of Africa's third-largest country, have also been unable to leave since the airport is closed and the skies are insecure. Saudi Arabia has evacuated Gulf nationals from Port Sudan on the Red Sea, 650 kilometers 400 miles from Khartoum. For its citizens, Jordan will follow the same path. Although the Sudanese army has stated that airports in Khartoum and Nyala, the largest city in Darfur, are troublesome and unclear when that would be feasible, Western nations are likely to send planes for their residents from Djibouti. According to a foreign diplomat who wanted to remain unnamed, some diplomatic employees in Khartoum were expecting an airlift out of Port Sudan within the next two days. Americans were cautioned by the U.S. Embassy that they would be traveling at their own risk and that it couldn't support convoys from Khartoum to Port Sudan. Since hostilities began on April 15, the army, led by Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, and the opposing rapid support forces RSF, led by Mohamed Hamdan Dagalo, also known as Hemeti, have so far failed to uphold ceasefires. Fighting on Saturday violated a three-day ceasefire agreed upon so that people could travel safely and see relatives for the Muslim festival of Eid al-Fitr. Both sides charged each other with violating the ceasefire. Hemeti told al Arabiya TV late on Saturday, I don't have an issue with the ceasefire. The troops showed no regard for it. We will respect it if they do. After being besieged for days in their houses or neighborhoods under fire and with combatants roving the streets, many Khartoum residents may feel compelled to escape in a panic if the fighting ever eases. Air strikes near the state broadcaster and fights in several locations, including close to the army headquarters, were reported by residents of Khartoum and the neighboring cities of Omdurman and Bari. One Bari resident reported that there had been constant air strikes, no water, and no electricity for a week. We are anticipating the major battle. She later messaged, it started. We are afraid of what is coming. We experienced hours of fear today when there were fights and firing between the army and RSF within the neighborhood. According to another resident, Muhammad Siddiq of Bari's Shambat area, Bullets were flying everywhere. A massive column of black smoke rose from Khartoum Airport on TV feeds. Medicine Sans Frontiers MSF, a medical aid organization, requested safe passage. MSF Sudan operations manager Abdallah Hussein stated, We need ports of entry where we can bring specialist trauma staff and medical supplies. According to the Sudanese Doctors' Union, 30 to hospitals in war zones had to be forcibly evacuated by the military or were caught in the gunfire, leaving more than two-thirds of them out of commission. Beyond Khartoum, Darfur, a western area that had a conflict that erupted in 2003 and left 300,000 people dead and 2.7 million displaced, has reported the most violence. According to UN statement from Saturday, after taking control of the organization's headquarters and storage facilities in Nyala, South Darfur, robbers stole at least 10 World Food Program vehicles and six additional food trucks. For years after the overthrow of long-reigning autocrat Omar al-Bashir in a popular uprising, Sudan's sudden descent into warfare dashed plans to restore civilian rule, 
brought an already impoverished nation to the verge of humanitarian catastrophe and threatened a wider conflict that could join outside powers. There has yet to be any indication that either side can win easily or is prepared to negotiate. Although the army possesses air power, the RSF is deeply ingrained in cities. In his most empathetic remarks since the conflict started, Burhan stated on Saturday that we all need to sit as Sudanese and find the right way out to return hope and life. He branded the RSF a rebel group, ordered its dissolution, and said a military solution was the only way to end the fighting earlier. Hemeti claimed on Saturday that negotiations with Burhan were impossible. Burhan and Hemeti occupied the main posts on a ruling council intended to transition to a civilian administration and combine the RSF into the army when Bashir was overthrown in a coup in 2021. On Friday, the World Health Organization announced that there had been 413 fatalities and 3,551 injuries since hostilities started. At least five charity workers have died in a nation that depends on food handouts.